Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. In the quaint village of Eldritch Hollow, nestled between undulating hills and dense, whispering forests, a legend persisted about the witch of Wittershin Wood. The old tales spoke of her spectral form gliding through the fog-laden trees, her eyes glowing like coals, and her laughter mingling with the howling wind. It was said that she had once been a healer in the village, wise and revered, until a tragic misunderstanding turned the townspeople against her, leading to her brutal demise at their hands. Since then, her spirit had not known rest, cursed to wander the woods, seeking vengeance against any who dared to trespass her domain. Amelia, a young journalist with a penchant for uncovering the truths behind local legends, found herself drawn to the story of the Witch of Wittershin Wood. Armed with her camera, notebook, and an insatiable curiosity, she arrived in Eldritch Hollow on the cusp of autumn, when the leaves began their fiery death and the air turned crisp and eerie. She spent her first few days interviewing the locals. Each person she spoke to held a mix of fear and fascination when discussing the witch. They warned her to steer clear of the woods after sunset, but Amelia's determination only grew with each whispered warning. On the eve of the harvest moon, Amelia decided to venture into Wittershin Wood. She wanted to capture the atmosphere of the place, hoping to perhaps debunk the myths, or at the very least, understand the source of the village's age-old fears. As she stepped under the gnarled boughs of the ancient trees, a chill ran down her spine. The forest was unnaturally silent. No rustle of wildlife, no whisper of leaves, only her footsteps crunching on the dry underbrush. Amelia pressed on, her flashlight cutting through the darkness, casting long, ominous shadows that danced around her. Deeper into the woods, she came upon a clearing where the moonlight filtered through the branches, illuminating a circle of stones. It was an old, forgotten part of the forest, where the air felt thicker and time seemed to stand still. The stones were arranged in a meticulous pattern, each one etched with worn, indecipherable runes. Amelia knelt to examine the stones, her fingers tracing the ancient carvings. As she did, a cold wind whipped through the clearing, extinguishing her flashlight and plunging her into darkness. Her heart raced as she fumbled to relight it, but before she could, a soft, cackling laughter echoed around her. Fighting back panic, Amelia stood and scanned the darkness. Her eyes slowly adjusted, and she could make out a figure standing on the edge of the clearing, tall, shrouded in a tattered cloak, with pale hands clutching a gnarled staff. The Witch of Wittershin Wood was not just a myth, and she was not pleased with the intrusion. You seek to uncover the truth? The witch's voice was like the rustle of dry leaves, cold and mocking. Then come, follow, if you dare. Compelled by a mixture of fear and the drive of her journalistic instincts, Amelia followed as the witch glided deeper into the forest. The trees seemed to close in around them, the path narrowing and the air growing colder with each step. As they journeyed further, the witch began to chant in a strange, melodious language, the words twisting in the wind. Fog rolled in thick waves, swallowing the path and dampening Amelia's senses. The forest transformed before her eyes, revealing glimpses of its haunted past. A gallows here, a shadowy figure hanging from a noose, a circle of witches there, chanting around a fire that burned with an unnatural blue flame. The witch's tale was unfolding, a story of betrayal and wrath, of power lost and vengeance sworn. Amelia realized that the witch intended for her to witness these horrors, to understand the depth of her anguish and anger. But as the spectral scenes grew more vivid and terrifying, Amelia understood too that the witch might not intend for her to leave the forest at all. The story of the Witch of Wittershin Wood was far from over, and Amelia was now a part of it, a part that might not have a chance to tell the tale. Amelia's heart pounded in her chest as she followed the spectral figure deeper into the depths of Wittershin Wood. The scenes of historical torment continued to unfold around her, each more harrowing than the last. The chilling sounds of the past, cries of agony, the crackling of fire, the chants of ancient incantations blended with the night, creating a symphony of nightmares. The witch led her to a secluded grove that Amelia had never seen documented in any of her research. Ancient trees arched overhead, their branches intertwined as if in a silent pact 
to keep this place hidden from the outside world. At the center of the grove stood an altar made of stone, covered in moss and the dark stains of old blood. The air here was thick with the scent of decay and a power that seemed to pulse from the very earth itself. Here, the witch's voice broke the eerie silence, her figure becoming more defined in the moonlight. Here is where they took everything from me, where they branded me a monster and tried to silence the truth of their deeds. Amelia, despite her growing fear, felt a deep need to document this moment, to capture the essence of the witch's story. She raised her camera, her hands trembling, and took a photo of the altar. The flash of the camera briefly illuminated the grove, casting stark, dramatic shadows. The witch turned to her, her eyes glowing faintly in the darkness. You wish to expose the truth, then know it well, she said, her voice gaining strength. The ground beneath Amelia's feet began to tremble, and the air grew cold as ice. Suddenly, visions assaulted Amelia, rapid, intense flashes of the witch's life. She saw a young woman, wise beyond her years, healing the sick. Then, the same woman betrayed, chased by those she had helped. She saw the witch bound to the very altar before them, the village condemning her under a false guise of righteousness. The injustice was palpable, and Amelia felt each emotion as if it were her own, the betrayal, the fear, the searing pain of the flames that consumed the witch's mortal body, and the birth of the curse that bound her spirit to these woods. The visions faded, and Amelia found herself back in the grove, gasping for breath, her body drenched in sweat. The witch stood over her, her presence commanding yet ethereal. This is my truth, she whispered. Carried by the winds, soaked into the soil, etched into the bark, this forest remembers even if the world does not. A profound sadness enveloped Amelia, intertwining with her fear. She understood now the depth of the witch's desire for her story to be known, to clear her name that had been so unjustly tarnished. But as the revelation washed over her, so did the realization of her own peril. The witch, though wronged, had been twisted by her centuries of torment and solitude. Her desire to share her story might not distinguish between revealing the truth and exacting her revenge on an unsuspecting world. You will carry my truth with you, the witch declared, her voice echoing like a decree of fate. But how you do it, and at what cost, remains to be seen. The forest around Amelia grew darker, the shadows more menacing. She knew she had to find a way out, to escape with the witch's story, to tell it but also to avoid becoming another lost soul of Wittershin Wood, another whisper among the trees. As Amelia stood, her resolve hardened by the weight of history and the chill of impending doom, she prepared to navigate her way back, to find a path to safety and to sanity. The story of the Witch of Wittershin Wood was far from over, and Amelia's role in it was yet to be determined. Amelia's mind raced as she tried to formulate a plan. Each breath felt heavy in the oppressive air of the grove, which now seemed to close in around her. The witch's gaze never wavered, its intensity a tangible force pushing against Amelia's resolve. Sensing her chance to escape dwindling, Amelia took a tentative step backward, her eyes locked on the witch's. Your story, I will share it. The world will know your truth, Amelia promised, her voice trembling not only with fear, but also with a fervent desire to bring justice to this tortured soul. But I must leave here, please. The witch's lips curled into a semblance of a smile, but it was tinged with sorrow and a chilling finality. So you shall, she whispered, her voice fading like mist. But as with all truths, there will be a price. Suddenly the wind picked up, howling through the trees with furious energy. Leaves and twigs swirled around Amelia, forming a vortex that blinded her and muffled her cries. She shielded her face with her arms, stumbling blindly through the underbrush, driven by pure instinct to find a way out. The wind ceased as abruptly as it had begun, leaving a deathly silence in its wake. Amelia lowered her arms slowly, squinting through the darkness. She was no longer in the grove, but on a well-trodden path that seemed vaguely familiar. With a surge of relief, she realized she was near the edge of the forest, close to where she had parked her car. Her relief, however, was short-lived. As she made her way to the car, she noticed something odd about her surroundings. The path was too familiar, not just from her entry into the woods, but from her entire life. 
It led not to her car, but to her childhood home, the house she grew up in, which lay hundreds of miles away from Eldritch Hollow. The house stood silent, windows dark, the front door slightly ajar as if inviting her in. Confusion and terror gripped Amelia. The witch had said there would be a price. Had she been transported through space, or was this another vision? Or perhaps, Amelia pondered with growing horror, she was now trapped in a reality woven by the witch, a limbo between the physical world and the spectral domain of Wittershin Wood. Trembling, Amelia approached the house, her feet moving against her will. As she crossed the threshold, the door slammed shut behind her, plunging her into darkness. She tried to scream, but no sound came out. The house creaked and groaned around her, the very walls imbued with the essence of her fear. Then, voices whispered through the halls, not just one, but many, all intertwining into a cacophony that seemed both alien and achingly familiar. They were the voices of the lost, of those who had wandered into Wittershin Wood and never returned, their fates sealed by their curiosity and the witch's curse. The voices grew louder, more insistent, and Amelia realized that they were not just echoing around her, but coming from within her. The witch had bound the souls of the lost to Amelia, their stories merging with hers. She was their vessel now, condemned to wander between worlds, a living archive of the forgotten and the damned. The realization hit her like a physical blow, and she sank to the floor, her mind reeling as the voices overwhelmed her. Amelia had sought the truth, but the truth was a burden that would haunt her forever, a never-ending story of sorrow and darkness. The Witch of Wittershin Wood had ensured that her story would live on, but at a terrifying cost that Amelia could never have foreseen. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video 